love it. It's wiggly. Thank you. Whoever you are talking to me. <laughs> uh, see here. I would like. Hmm. Let's open in prayer, folks. Heavenly Father, we just, we come before you. We thank you for the opportunity to gather yet again and uh, from across the provinces here to connect with each other and to connect with you. And so, Lord, we just invite you to direct our time here, to open our ears, to open our hearts, to help us hear and see you better and perceive you better, perceive you closer. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so today, you want me to talk a little louder or you want to get closer? I don't have a mic. I thought that, I thought we would be audible enough. Okay, how, I will speak this loud. Is this loud enough? This is loud enough? Okay, I'm going to yell at you and you. <laughs> Okay, so this week, um, we're going to be talking about the prayer of examine. And um, when I was thinking about it, I, these, uh, the other two terms that came to mind were compline and vespers. And when I was, when I was 10, my dad was uh, on sabbatical and he took us as a family to uh, Holden Village up in the mountains, up from Lake Chelan, Washington. It was, uh, we had no home. We were camping in the cabins provided there. They were nice. They were chalets. And it was, it was a beautiful, it was like the best year of my life, actually. Ten, ten years old, we spent, sorry, Boyd, no offense. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we spent this eight months, not a, no, ten months, not quite a full year, um, up in this just idyllic location um, with a very small community. In the summer, there would be like up to a thousand people a week for, for camps and retreats or whatever. But in the winter, there was a staff, uh, there was a staff and then about 80 people living there. And uh, it's still open to uh, pastors and ministry leaders in the winter to come have a free week, which I've thought about doing, but it's, uh, it's gone quite liberal, so I don't know if it would be quite as enjoyable. <laughs> but anyway, at the time, it was lovely, and we would do Vespers. and that, So that was my exposure to Vespers. And Vespers is basically an evening service right at dusk um, of psalms and hymns. And so it's, it's an evening thing. And then I was just talking with, uh, with Julie about um, the book of the Dun Cow by Walt Wangren. And in that book, they do Compline. And Compline um, is, is evening prayer. It's more like a bedtime prayer. So, so Vespers is like the evening thing and Compline is just before bed. And I found an example of Compline. Um, Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. Shield the joyous and all for your love's sake. Amen. So it's, it's a beautiful little prayer, but that, that, that's the tradition in, in the church. Um, Catholic, Anglican, Lutheran, a lot of the liturgical churches have, have those. Though I really don't know many who have followed them. And as I was dis, uh, dis, doing a little study on this, I discovered there's the canonical hours that are set throughout the day. So Matins is is the morning prayer that is often done with lauds, which is praises. So prayers and praises in the morning. And then there's um, sect and I can't remember. There's like, there's, there's six or seven of them um, done at certain times of the day. Anyway, I thought it was kind of interesting. And, and the prayer of the examine is, was done, uh, invented, created, um, developed by Ignatius of Loyola in the 16th century. Um, but it's just a, a completely different thing. It's toward, it's traditionally done like twice a day, um, but it's a reflective thing. So it's not really a morning thing because nothing's happened yet. <laughs> so it's, it's an intentionally directed reflection on your day. 
So in comparison to the Vespers and the Compline, which are very, very generalized, the examine is a very um, specific and personal and individual reflection on your day and asking intentional questions um, to, to develop your walk with the Lord. And, um, and I guess what I, what I liked about it was um, how targeted it was, but also um, you're, you're, in, you're, you're being very intentional about it. So it's, it's very much a, a, a self-awareness developing thing. I think really, if you're, you're looking at, um, let's see here, where do we, yeah. Um, you're looking at the specific things of your day. One of the, one of the uh, things that I read talked about the data of your day. Um, so you're targeting reflections um, on whatever portion of the day has completed so far and examining your thoughts and your feelings and your motivations and bringing them under the Lordship and the direction of, of the Holy Spirit. Um, so it's, it's, it's a way of becoming more self-aware and it's not general. You're not looking at your whole year, you know, your whole month or your, your whole week or whatever. It's just that immediate portion of the day um, that has, that has passed so far, so far. So if you're doing one midday and then you're doing one at the end of the day, um, you can do that, or you can just do one. I'm, it, I'm just telling you what the norm is or <laughs> how it was developed. You do what you want. <laughs> um, and uh, I, I just like, uh, as I was going through it, I, I was struck by the, um, the, the potential for it to really be a training thing. Um, I tend to go through my day and not even be able to remember what I had for breakfast, much less things that have impacted me positively or negatively, or if I've done something that I'm worrying about, then that will be the last thing. That will be the dominant thing that I remember of the day. And so what I appreciate about this is the, the focus is both the positive of the negative, where you've experienced God, where you, where you missed him, where you didn't follow him, um, and, and then also what, what's happening in you with that. Do you, do you notice the, the pleasure, the joy, the, the um, freedom? Do you notice the oppression, the hard, the stress, the anxiety, you know, even, even paying attention to your body? Um, what, what does it feel like? And I, I feel like it could be a very, a very good learning tool. Um, I remember when our kids were little, we would do, um, in, at, at the dinner table, we would do highs and lows. So everybody share what was your high of the day? What was your low of the day? And it's really, it's really surprising when it comes to actually getting specific. Um, what, what will you remember? What will you pick out? What will you share? And if the negative thing uh, is, is hard to find, why is that? Is it because you've is it because you've tried to dismiss it or, 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 you know, or that you've really dealt with it already and it's not feeling very negative anymore. Um, but these are, these are things that uh, it's really self tutorial. Like it really would, I think, train you. And, and I remember with, with the kids, it was, um, it was a good exercise to kind of spur interactions with them, but also get a real pulse on on their lives and so um i i see the similarities here um because it's it's a way to to get specific um on your on your personal walk and and the things that you might just let slip past um even the good things that were rich and and valuable like um yesterday morning i had this really great uh worship time in the morning and by noon later it would have been completely forgotten you know um and so i i i just think that that very intentional approach of hi come on in <laughs> um the intentional approach of of calling maybe it's even good for us elderly types to <laughs> sharpen our brains <laughs> what have we done today what have what have we experienced today 
and what was our reaction and what are the, the challenges in there. Um, so let's see, we're just, we're just talking, Darlene, the topic is on um, the prayer of, of examine. It's a, it's a traditional um, method of, of reflecting on your day. And so I'm just describing it right now. Um, <clears throat> where did you need God more? Where did you, where did you see his hand? Those kinds of things. So these are the elements of the examine. And as I was researching this to get, you know, the broader picture, I, I learned of it first in this storybook again, but I wanted to kind of get a, get a broader spectrum understanding of it. And so this is from um, the Archdiocese of Denver. And it looks like traditionally there's about five main points that are elements that you go through when you're doing the prayer of examine. Um, and so this, these are them. So you, you focus in on the presence of God. And number one, you focus on gratitude. Look for gratitude. What were the gifts that you received from God in this day? The whole day was a gift of God, but how is, how is he looking upon you now? How does he see you? How has he graced you? Um, so being trying to be specific again. Um, number two is petition, asking for insight to make this examine fruitful, ask to see clearly the spiritual realities of the day, things that might have slipped past you as irrelevant, maybe there's a spiritual significance to, to one of them. Number three, review, review your day with God, things or actions that were from God or not from God, uh, recall the thoughts the feelings, the desires of the day, those from the Lord and those from the enemy, and review your response to each. Number four, forgiveness. Ask for forgiveness for anything that comes to mind that you did or said or neglected that was sinful or selfish in some way. Um, any way that you rejected God's love and accepted the promptings of the evil one instead. Um, and then finishing with renewal, look toward the next day and plan how to live it according to God's plan for your life. Um, conclude the examine prayerfully aware of God's presence. So I, I feel like when I, when I, when I look, read through this, I kind of see the day as, as um, sand <laughs> and you're, you're lifting up your day and you're and you're sifting through it and you're looking for you're looking for specifically the blessings or or the struggles or the challenges and you're looking at your own heart where were you in each of those did you skim over it did you appreciate it did you um, lose it on somebody why what was what do you think triggered that and what um, what is what is the dominant thought cycle that's going on in your head is it is it positive? Is it encouraging? Is it um, words from God? Is it blessings for others? Or is there a nagging um, uh, uh, cycling of, of, of frustration or, you know, like just being very intentional to look at what these particles are that are, that are part of your day. And I am keep it in the day. You know, the temptation is when I was 24 or whatever, you know, dragging things up from this is just the day. Just keep it, keep it on the day. Um, so those are the elements. And I, 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 when I was going through it, I confess that I found it a little bit complicated to, um, to keep these elements in mind. There's a lot of factors, right? There's a lot of very descriptive words. There are a, a lot of uh, little different ways that you can you can go off and, and define it or describe it um, for for the focus of the experience time and um, and it it's like how do you do this <laughs> how did they do this I guess I guess if you do it enough it becomes rote you remember the directions for each each element and it, and it could become very natural but it would it would take I think a fairly persistent approach to that so um, I just want to encourage you, don't worry about it. Uh, this, is, this is an introduction to something that is probably new. Um, I know that 
you know, if, if you want, you can write it all out and then, um, and then you can read through it yourself to practice it daily. But when I was going through it, there's lots on YouTube. Um, and, and you could find a directed one on YouTube that you would just have to click play and, and it leaves the spaces for you to do the reflection time, but it brings in the questions. And, and so there's, there's lots of options if you do want to pursue it later, um, on your own time and you don't want to be all tied up with, okay, what, what's next? What do I do next? Let it, let it flow more naturally. So Anyway, Google is sometimes good. Google is. Um, let's see here. So I'm going to use, for our practice time, I'm going to use the, the guide from the Sensible Shoes. Um, she did her own adaptation of Ignatius of Loyola's um, five points. And so I'm just, I'm basically going to read through um, a few of the questions for thought and consideration and, and just and then um, leave silence for that. Um, so that's how we're going to do it. Uh, this is, let's see, um, think of it. I like the way she described it. She said, think of the prayer of examine as a way of sitting with Jesus and talking through the details of your day. In the examine, we slow down and pay attention to the data of our lives. I think I brought that term out earlier. I like that. The data. Uh, we notice our thoughts, our actions, our emotions, and our motivations. By taking time to review our day in prayer, we have the opportunity to perceive the movement of the Spirit and to discover God's presence in all of life. So um, as you begin to pray, still and quiet yourself, give thanks for some specific gifts God has given you today, then ask the Holy Spirit to guide and direct your thoughts as you prayerfully review your day, let the details play out like a short movie in your, in your mind. And that, that helped me. Okay. Picture it. And wh where did I start my day and where did I go next? And so using that creative imagination, like we, we practiced with last week, um, pay attention to both the things that give you li gave you life in your day and the things that drained you in your day. And notice where the spirit invites you to linger and to ponder. So again, um, I think it was in the Lectio Divina that, that we were like, okay, listen for uh, a phrase or a word that stands out to you. And, and, and soak on that one, dwell on that one, let the Holy Spirit speak to you on that one. In this context, we're kind of doing the same thing, but it's, it's from the list of your day, the from the data of your day. Is there one experience? Um, or memory that that you feel like the Holy Spirit's really using the highlighter on and wanting you to focus on that particular experience. So um, yeah, so that's what we're going to do. Daniel, you're just in time for the practical. <laughs> Did you get your turkey babies? Good. <laughs> so again, if you want to sit, sit. If you want to lay down, lay down. Um, and I will I will go through some guided uh, questions for you to reflect on, and I'll give you time to reflect on them, and then we will close in prayer. So I'll give you just a minute. to, And if you want to take notes, get your pen and paper ready. I'll give you a minute. I think Julie went to get her blanket. So the scripture that we're going to begin with is Psalm 139, verses 23 to 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. See if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. When were you aware of God's presence today? And when did you sense his absence?
as you think of the awareness of God's presence or his absence, what are the feelings that come to mind? When did you respond to God with love, faith, and obedience today? When did you resist or avoid him? As you play through the movie in your head of your day, when did you feel most alive? When did you feel most energized? What was happening? When did you feel drained or troubled or agitated?
I think as you reflect on the things that uh, energize and make you feel alive, it's good to take note of what they are and think about why, why they're energizing, why they're, they have such a positive impact. And when you feel drained or troubled or agitated, why? What's happening? Why is it that those things are causing that experience? Is this an area of not trusting God? Is this an area of conflict? Is this an area of not trusting God? <laughs> Sorry, back there. Or conflict? So just examine those uh, experiences a little bit deeper when you're going through those. Um, so having reviewed the details of your day, confess what needs to be confessed. Allow God's spirit to bring you to wholeness, grace, and forgiveness. So if there's something in the negatives that comes to mind that needs a confession, that you need to ask forgiveness for, even if it doesn't seem like it's a really big deal, but it's something that has been nagging you, maybe it's a, a small disobedience that the Lord's been prompting you on. So take some time to do that. I'm just going to read uh, a little bit more of Psalm 139. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know me when I 
you know when I sit and when I rise, you perceive my thoughts from afar, you discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand on, on me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. So let's just, um, I'm just going to close with prayer and then we can, I mean, close this meditation time with prayer. Um, the final stage is looking forward to the next day. So Lord, show us how to live more attentively to you tomorrow. Lord, show us how to live more attentively to you for the rest of this day. Teach me to structure my day so that your spirit will be included a natural part of the rhythms of my day. Grant me the grace to recognize your efforts to make your love known to me. In Jesus' name, amen. So I'm curious if anything jumped out at you in this uh, reflection, um, in this practice that might be a little different. Right. Yeah. It's only one o'clock. How can there be a list of happies and sads already? Highs and lows. Yeah, I, I thought of that actually when I was putting it together. I'm like, oh, this is too early in the day for this uh, particular one. But then as I went farther and I realized that it was sometimes done twice a day, once at mid mid midday and once in the evening, then I thought, oh, okay, well, that fits. And, and then when you think about it, depending on how busy your day is, like if you had a really quiet day today, maybe there hasn't been the highs and lows yet. Um, but for, for people who are having a busy day, yeah, you could have quite, quite the list to go through quite the set of little movies <laughs> to run through, um, and, and examine. So, you know, the busier the day, perhaps the more often one should stop and, and adopt this practice. And I, I guess a shortened version of it would be to just sit and say, so what's been in my day already? And Lord, where have I seen you? And where have I missed you? And where have I neglected you? And when I, where have I disobeyed you? You, uh, there, this, this thing I'm pretty sure you wanted me to do and I haven't yet done it. I haven't phoned so-and-so or I haven't done whatever it is, you know. Um, and, and the busier the day, maybe, maybe you do it more than twice, I guess. But yeah, that's, that's a good point, Chris. Anyone else? I think it's interesting because, like, I love reflecting on scripture and I love reflecting on like everything that God's done for me and like being like grateful. But I do struggle with reflecting on the negative parts of my day without seeing the guilt. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a good practice for me to get into because. I like to gloss them over and numb myself instead of addressing it. And when I ask for forgiveness or something, I keep it in, like I keep it general because I don't like to use the the bad parts. Right. So. Yeah, that's that's why I was struck with the intentionality of this this uh, discipline. Um, look for both, mm -hmm. and and I was thinking of of scriptures that would be good to use. And I thought, oh, Philippians 4. Oh, no, that says only think on what is good and just and noble and pure. Right. Only think on the, well, think on these things. And 
And I thought, okay, so we're, we're thinking on the negative things, but we're not, we're not trying to dwell on them. We're trying to notice them and, and invite the Lord into them and turn them into a learning, growing thing rather than a, uh, I don't know. I just kept thinking of, of how the, the worst thing in your day will hang on um, and you take it to bed with you and you, you, you pick it up again in the morning and you carry it along and there's no processing. It's, there's just the heaviness um, and the, the, the regret or, or the sense of neglect of something. And, and this seems a much better way to deal with the negatives. You know, Lord, was there something that I missed that I did wrong that I can just confess and receive my forgiveness for? And if it's not, then, then what is it that I need to learn from this, that, that this negative thing is glaring? Um, being highlighted so uh, yeah that's a good point julie that how how do we process the negative things and the, the bigger the negative thing is the more you're going to notice it in your body you know you tighten up in your shoulders and you feel that clenching in your gut and you know maybe you end up with a headache or <laughs> worse but yeah Yeah. And it's uh, so you need to just go, you know, feel it, you'll be still need to shove it aside. Ultimately, you're working on it. Put it down. Right? Already. <laughs> Homework at 1 30. <laughs> yeah, naming, naming the negative thing. Um, I'm just sharing with you guys because you probably didn't hear, but naming the negative things so that it can, it can get its, uh, its recognition and identification that it needs um, to do the processing. Yeah. Good point. Thanks, Lois. Anybody online have anything to share? Okay. So, um, what you want to do with this, I'm not sure. Uh, with all of these practices, I'm not sure how, how you might be incorporating them or if you're just kind of sifting through them to see which ones suit you best. Um, but if you would like to get the, the write-up of the, of the questions that I walked you through, then I can email that out for you guys. I can just copy-paste and send it out for you, and then you can practice that on your own. Um, I embellished a little bit in there, so maybe I'll just throw those points in there. But yeah, I, th I think this is another, another good one to try. And I guess that's what I keep thinking of as I go through all of these different things. There's probably going to be one or two practices that stand out more for you personally than the others. But, but you're, you're, you're getting sort of, of an overview of, of a bunch of them um, in, in these eight weeks. So yeah. So this is week four. We have four more weeks and we're just going to keep going. So if you do miss any, then you can find them on YouTube and, and catch up. So why don't we close with prayer and we're finished early, but that's okay. It's not a seminar. <laughs> Did you have something you were going to add? Well, just, you know, if, if anyone's interested in this, we'll read the book. There's the... Vespers. Okay. The old green Lutheran hymnal. Um, yeah, you can find them online, but there's there's copies of the Matins and the Vespers and the Compline services, which are, are kind of neat. I think, I don't know, I shared with uh, some people, I'm not sure if I shared with any of you online, um, the Lectio 365 app. Um, it has a morning and an evening meditation that's that's guided it's really awesome um very repetitive in some ways and and sometimes they do a historical debut which is kind of a weird one let's talk about queen bertha i don't want to talk about queen bertha <laughs> i'm pretty sure her name was bertha <laughs> and she did really great things but 
it wasn't what I was looking for. I, I like, I like the scriptural meditations that they lead and the evening ones are super mellow. Um, very, very helpful to, to wind down for the day. So Lectio 365 is the app if you want to try something like that. But um, I think it would be cool to do a Vespers service where it's just uh, psalms and hymns and um, just a, a, an evening time of, of, of light worship. It's quite, oh, quite lovely. Liturgy. Oh, that's right, because it's all liturgy. Anyway, I loved them when I was 10. <laughs> but we were at this really uh, idyllic place to, to live. It was just beautiful. So every, everything that had to do with music or, or anything, it just added to the atmosphere. So yeah, check out one of the old hymnals in the Lutheran churches or, or, or elsewhere. Probably the Anglican hymnal would have one too, Catholic. Okay, let's, let's close with prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you again for this time. I pray, Lord, that um, that we would adopt from from these practices the intentionality of of examining our days and our actions and our words, and not carrying the heaviness, but bringing it to you and and resolving it, but just growing in in a greater and greater awareness of your presence and the many gifts that you give us. I think, um, I think if we could make this a regular practice, it would really transform our outlook on life. So Lord, we do, we invite you to direct us in this exercise um, that we would be intentional as we approach each day and each segment of each day. If we decide to break it up with more than one of these pauses, Lord, help us to intentionally draw you into our schedule and um, and our experiences. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Goodbye. Thank you, Jacqueline. I also mentioned, like, there's another app called Reflect that is quite good as well. I love okay. Lectio 365, but Reflect has a whole bunch of different elements to it. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Reflect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's quite a few different apps out there to yeah. try. Yeah. So, okay. Thanks, Cheryl. Bye-bye. Yep. Bye-bye. Have a great day. Thanks. Have a great weekend. You too. Thanks, Jacqueline. You're welcome. Yeah. Bless you guys. Thank you.